In this lecture, we will discuss preliminary data analysis using continuous data through graphical techniques. Let's look at the agenda. In terms of the agenda, we will discuss graphical techniques. We will talk about series plots or what we call run charts, talk about histograms and box plots. Let's start with an example. This data represents a sample of 50 serial boxes. One of the critical to quality characteristics in this case is weight. Serial boxes should all weigh exactly, exactly 16 ounces. Do you think that they all will? Shouldn't we have some way to summarize the data that is simple and more compact? What's happening with the process? Let's, let's look at some visualization tools for the data. First graphical or visualization technique we will discuss is a run chart. This is a plot of the data over time. It is also considered a time series plot. This also allows us to look for patterns in the data. Does the data seem to have a constant mean? What about variability? Do we see any patterns such as trends, cycles, oscillation, etc.? The run chart will allow us to answer these questions. Let's first take a closer look. Let's look at the anatomy of a run chart. You always start at the top of the chart where the title is. In this case, the title is the weight of 16 ounce boxes of cereal off the B machine on the A shift. If you look straight down at the bottom, you will see the X axis or the horizontal axis, which is labeled box, and that's the data in time order. Looking at the far left, you will see the word weight, and that's the y-axis or vertical axis with the variable being monitored is depicted. The last is inside where the actual data points are plotted with respect to the weight of each box. Connecting the dots of the individual points helps us to identify any patterns over time. So let's get a little practice. Note that there are three charts here on the slide. What I'd like you to do is take a look at it and see whether you can come up with an interpretation from these charts. Take a look at letter A. We're tracking our mileage in the Phillips over a period of time. So if you were to look at that run chart, you would see some variation in there. What might be typical that could happen under those circumstances? Well, one example is maybe normally you drive in the city and sometimes you go out and do some highway driving and you tend to get much better mileage when you're doing highway driving. That might answer that one. Take a look at the next one, absenteeism. Do you see anything that might answer the trend there? Notice there's one, two, three, four, and then it seems every fifth one, the percent absenteeism goes up. That could be answered by maybe this person doesn't like to go to school on Fridays, or they don't like to be at work on Fridays and they take long weekends. What about the third one? This is temperature controller. This is what we would expect to see if the controller had to stabilize right after startup. Now, what should we do if the data set is static and not collected over time? Run charts are very good at allowing us to identify trends or patterns in the data, but they aren't very good at telling us a static story about the data. What if we want to know things about the data like spread, center? What does a distribution look like? We can answer these questions using static plots. Static plots give us a visual snapshot of the data. Dot plots, histograms, and box plots are just three of the many static plots. Each look at the data a little bit differently. A dot plot creates a visualization based on raw data. A histogram creates a visualization of the data based on group data. Finally, a box plot creates a visualization based on summarized data. We will focus on histograms and box plots. Let's first look at a histogram. A histogram is a static plot of grouped data. We will group data into cells or intervals then we plot bars where the heights are the counts within the groups. A histogram is useful in both the discrete and continuous data situation. The histogram sorts the data in our intervals and plots the amount of data in each interval as a height of a bar. A histogram is useful in seeing the shape of the distribution of the data, where the center is, and what type of variability it has. In the case of our serial box weights, the center is at about 16.3. The range of the data is from 15.6 to 16.8. Let's look at the anatomy of a histogram. We start at the top with the title. Here it is weights of boxes of cereals off the machine from the A shift. At the bottom, we see that the variable being monitored is weight. Looking at the left, which is the vertical axis, we see the number of observations in each interval. Making a histogram is like sorting mail. Instead of letters, you put the numbers into the right intervals or bins. Now let's take a look at how we construct a histogram. Our example is the serial box weight data. First thing we want to do is find the range of the data. The maximum, which is 16.7, minus the minimum, which is 15.7, gives us a range of 1. 
the number of data points, or n, is equal to 50. Generally, to get the number of cells, or bins, we take the square root of n, or the square root of 50, which is about 7. Usually, you keep the number of cells somewhere between 5 and 12, but it's not an exact science. To approximate the cell interval, you would divide the range by the number of cells, which would be 1 over 7, or about 0.14. You might want to round this number to a more convenient number like 0.2. Next, you divide the range into the cell boundaries to span the data from 15.6 to 16.8, tally the data points, and calculate the frequencies. Then we draw the histogram. The bar heights represent the frequency. If you choose a different number of cells, then the histogram will look a little different. There is really no one correct answer for this construct. If the histogram doesn't look quite right to you, try a different number of cells. Just remember that too many cells will give the histogram that choppy look and too few cells will result in a few large bars that don't really convey much information. There are variations to the histograms, like you can show the histogram horizontally or use characters instead of the typical graphs. This version is usually called a stem and leaf plot. Here are some examples of different patterns on histograms. The one in the upper left hand corner gives a distribution that seems to be roughly symmetric. This means that the shape on the right of the middle is the mirror image of the shape on the left of the middle. The graph in the upper right hand corner we consider to be positively skewed or skewed right. This means that the data trails off to the right side or the tail of the distribution trails off to the right. Finally, the bottom graph we consider bimodal. This means that we have two peaks. There are many other typical shapes. These could be negatively skewed or skewed to the left, trimodal, etc. Now let's practice with some histograms. These are three situations where we have taken a sample of daily discharge times from a hospital. In the first situation, the data seems to be symmetric. This means that there is a distinct expected discharge time with a stable variability. This would be the ideal situation. For the second plot, the distribution seems to be bimodal. This could be caused by maybe two peak times for discharge. And finally, the third graph gives somewhat of a symmetric distribution, but with some data that we might consider outliers. So we have looked at a static graphical summary of the data based on groupings. Now let's look at a graphical technique based on summary measures. The final plot that we will talk about is a box plot. It is made from the summarized data. The box itself is based on the quartiles. It is useful when the data is continuous. Here is a diagram explaining the different parts of the plot. It is constructed based on what we consider the percentiles of the data. This is where we order the data from smallest to largest and then divide it so that a certain percentage of the data fall below our value in question. So based on the plot, we would have the box sitting at Q1 and Q3, where Q1 represents the value that is 25% of the data falls below, and Q3 represents the value where 75% of the data fall below. Then there is a line inside the box that represents the median, which is the value where 50% of the data fall below. There are lines that come from the middle edges of the box. These lines extend in both directions to the extreme points among the data that are not considered outliers. If the data has no outliers, then these extend to the min and the max of the data. Sometimes this plot is referred to as a box and whiskers plot, and these lines represent the whiskers. If there are any outliers, they are represented by points beyond the whiskers. Now, let's take a look at the box plot of the serial data. So from the box plot, we can see that there may be some points that are a little more extreme on the left side than the right. The line for the median does seem roughly in the middle of the box. We also see that there are no outliers. Here is an example of how we bring this all together. This example will be done in a separate video. Please view the video called Preliminary Analysis Continuous Data Example.